I'd like to call to order the regular park board meeting for Jan uh, June 17, 2014 to order. Um, shall I please call the roll? Madam. Here. 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 I am here. Here. <laughs> All right. We have a quorum to conduct business this evening. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, so uh, any items to be added, removed, or changed on the agenda? No, there are not. All right. So I'll move into um, item number five, our consent agenda. So I would entertain a motion to establish the consent agenda as follows. Approval of the mini meeting minutes for the regular board meeting of May 20th. Approval of the paid expenditures, unpaid expenditures, treasurer's report, purchases. Intergovernmental agreement for the utilization of the city's vehicle fueling s facilities and prevailing wage ordinance number 337. So moved. Second. Motion by Dylan, second by Foyles. Any further discussion? Shelly, please call the roll. Aye. 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 Motion carries. So I entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda as established. So moved. Second. Motion by Tillman, second by Foyles. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, next item is guests matters from the public. We see a lot of people out there. We're really looking forward to it. Mm -hmm. um, anybody wish to address the board tonight, though? All righty then. Moving on. Uh, next item on the agenda is number seven, matters from the commissioners. Any comments? No news is good news, right? Mm -hmm. Hot days, quarries, like it. Mm -hmm. uh, next item on the agenda is correspondence. So we had three pieces of correspondence this month. A uh, thank you from uh, Linda Hunar. Um, in, res in reference to the Super Savvy Senior Expo, a note from Sandra Gabor expressing appreciation uh, for time and advertisement on handling the reorganization. Uh, and then number three, uh, an invitation to a retirement reception for Pastor Newhouse uh, from the Behavior Methodist Church. So we'll put those on the file. Thank you. Next item on the agenda. Welcome back. Thank you. I have my official name for you. Nice. Excellent. Very good. For those of you in the audience that didn't know, uh, Carrie's our Director of Marketing and Public Relations, and she just got married last month, so she went from Carrie Miller to Carrie Feltham. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay. Uh, the River Rhapsody Concert Series kicks off tomorrow night at the beautiful Riverwalk in the heart of downtown Batavia. Piano Man will take the stage at 7, b 7 p.m., bringing the music of Elton John and Billy Joel to life. The free concerts are held on Wednesdays from 7 to 8.30 p.m. throughout the summer and will feature a diver diverse range of tunes. A variety of concessions will be available for purchase, so bring a date, a family, or some friends and make an evening of it. Batavia's annual, annual Windmill City Festival will be blowing into town Thursday, July 10th through Sunday, July 13th. Bring your family and friends to the Riverwalk to enjoy delicious food, an exciting carnival, a value-packed flea market, challenging contests, and more. Best of all, admission is free. To view the full schedule, please visit windmillcityfest.org. Runners, take your mark. The Windmill World 5K run is just around the corner, and this year it has a new date and time. Don't miss out on your chance to tackle the beautiful Fox River, River Trail on Friday, July 11th at 7 p.m. The race is now chip time. You can register online at signmeup.com. The cost is $25 in advance or $30 on race day, and kids under eight do receive a $10 discount. The Batavia Depot Museum will present the annual Quilt and Textile Show uh, Friday, July 18th through Sunday, July 20th at the Eastside Community Center in Shannon Hall at 14 North Van Buren Street. The show runs from 1 to 6 p.m. on Friday and 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. on Saturday and Sunday. Details on the show can be found online at BataviaQuiltShow.com. 
For more information, please visit our website at batavaparks.org or call 879-5235. Thank you. Thanks, Karen. Okay, next item on the agenda is um, staff reports. First, we'll start with um, any updates from staff. You guys look exhausted. <laughs> They've been working really hard. I can tell. I read the work plan. <laughs> <Very goal>. <laughs> <laughs> okay, go. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, two things I do want to update you on outside my work plan goals. Number one is um, per the city of Batavia, for Windmill City Fest, which Carrie mentioned earlier, um, they have asked people. They've asked me and someone else that would be there at all times to be Basset certified for alcohol training. Um, this is new last year. They did not ask for this and they did not ask for this training. So Tammy and myself have gone through a rigorous four hour online training course, <laughs> learning all about how not to overserve and how to check IDs and things like that. So hopefully, um, I, I'm not sure if this is an annual thing that we'll go through this again, but this is something new that they did present to us this year and the two of us are certified. So now anytime that the beer tent is open, there will be someone pass it certified at the location. And in regards to my work plan goals, um, three of them I wanted to talk about. One of them would be getting through the new conversion of the eight month fiscal year. Obviously I've been talking about this for almost a year now, um, but pretty much the remaining part is to start the budget in July. But on more of the finance end is we have to install a new version of MSI so we can actually have a 2015 um, budget and also payroll and AP. So I will start that up in the next two months, working with our IT contractor to get that installed. So by the time we come up with budget season in July, we'll be ready to start entering data as we go forward. Another uh, work plan goal I have is um, to develop a five-year technology plan with the technology committee. <coughs> I'd asked Allison a few months ago, because I am in charge of IT, although I don't know what everyone else here um, and staff, what they do on a day-to-day -day basis and what, what they would need in technology. So I asked if I could create a technology committee, have a representative from each department on that committee to get a gauge of what they're looking for. So this committee has now met twice so far, and we're looking at what are the wants and the needs of the district, and then in future meetings, we will also talk about a plan, you know, what is most important right now, and then how to move ahead from that as well. So looking at our current resources, see what we can do to make things more efficient, or if it's just something that maybe because of um, the recession we just kind of neglected and we need, really need to go back and look at it and move ahead. So it's going to be an interesting process to go through all that, pro all that whole um, review. The third thing is um, the impl implementation of the ADP timekeeping software. Where we are at today is um, we have every, every employee in the system, but we're actually checking that work to make sure what was imported is correct. And in the next two weeks, supervisors will be going through training on how to approve their employees time and then it, once that has been occurred then everyone else as staff will learn how to enter their time we are going to do a tiered approach we're going to go with the office which i've kind of coined as anyone sitting at a desk so you know it's rec supervisors it's all of us here it's all marketing all the office um and the parks department will go at the same time because they're using a um a uh, biometric scanner and then last the recreation department will go because we want to get everything, all the nicks and crannies out before we pass on to recreation, which is just a more complicated process because you're dealing with a lot of people outside of a nine to five work period on a weekend and maybe using the phone to sign in or using the tablet to sign in. And it's just going to be easier to get all of it kind of done and over. So that's my update. Don't feel any pressure. I'm worn out. Um, <laughs> I, yeah, I did. No, I didn't have to take the alcohol test. They, they said, I know. Jim, slippery slope. Yeah. 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 Things are running good here. I'm not going to say it. The things are running. Um, I, I realized that I had not uh, put into my update to, to Rita that uh, uh, Monday we released the bid for the um, uh, poured in place safety service that's going to be installed out at uh, South Mill Creek. Uh, we are going to be opening that bid on the 1st of July, and you guys are going to have the opportunity to approve it at the July meeting. So um, that is coming up. On, secondarily, uh, next Tuesday, we're going to release the bid for the painting of the museum. That kind of 
came up really quickly on this. That was not something that was anticipated. The quotes that came back were much like the roof on the ERO. They were well over our $20,000 uh, limit. So we've had to create a spec and we're going out. Uh, it's going to be released, as I said, next Tuesday. And that'll be open the 8th of July. And we'll get to approve that also at, Ju at the July meeting. The, the target is to get that done by the end of August so that it's ready for the uh, encampment and uh, celebration um, in the second weekend of September. So and that's the 150th birthday celebration of the museum. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's going to have a brand new same color scheme, uh, but really fresh look. So we're excited about that. Uh, I guess updates on uh, my work plan goals would be the uh, obviously the Engstrom renovation phase one. We'll be talking a little more about that later. Uh, this port in place safety surface out at Mill Creek, which is our first full port in place surface in the district. So we're really learning a lot about that. Gary, uh, Motika, and Eric and I have uh, been working very diligently on that one. And then the, uh, the East Side Community Condition Study is underway. And uh, we've been working with the architects at PHN. Uh, th they've been gathering lots of information from Gary and Eric. So we're, we're in our first phase of that study. So. It's just always something to do. As you can tell from uh, Carrie's report, we're all very busy and uh, kind of supporting each other through thick and thin here. Um, I'd like to give uh, kudos to uh, uh, key staff and the team effort it took to get the quarry open for this season. Uh, Alex, of course, and his uh, facility manager, Amber Smith, our uh, park supervisor, Kim Hansen, and facility trade supervisor, Gary Motika. Um, they did an exceptional job this year coordinating the installation of several new items that we have down there, as well as some new landscape plantings. And um, you know, we're, we're also working on uh, rebuilding an existing uh, deck structure that we are going to be renaming. Uh, and. Um, just got a lot of things going on that um, met that deadline of opening day, and I think the place looked great. How mm -hmm. about you? So thank you to everyone for the support. Uh, the South uh, Plaza at the Riverwalk, uh, we've been doing some, our flower plant plantings throughout the district. Uh, you, I'm sure you could tell when you walked in this morning, today. The Riverwalk uh, also did receive some plantings, the Depot Museum. We had some um, flower plots, larger ones that were uh, put around the Bond Center and the Banshaw and in South Plaza. So there's yet more to come. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, with the weather uh, now starting to finally warm up, you know, um, the grass will slow down and uh, we'll be able to start working on some of our landscape projects. As far as work plan goals, just a couple uh, things. Um, I too am working with Allison uh, Niamela on um, establishing a facilities committee. Uh, what that committee will do will be uh, identify um, things within our current uh, facility assets um, that uh, support and enhance our programming and um, things that would uh, work along within our master plan that we received and um, this committee would be warranted then to review the contracted uh, Eastside Center uh, asset management plan and uh, come up with a prioritized list uh, to react to those recommendations. Um, and then in support of that, another one uh, that I have would be um, the photo documentation of our facility assets. And that we currently have um, going and it's to categorize and uh, make sure we have photo documentation for our infrastructure replacement um, program as well as for our gas and insurance reporting. And uh, I found working on both of those two goals together, um, they support each other very well. So I think um, we've got quite a bit to do, but I think we'll, be, we'll do it really well. Thank you. Thank you. Um, as you know, summer is in full swing right now, and so are all of our programs. Uh, I just wanted to highlight also that uh, with Camp Kaleidoscope, we have 60 kids signed up uh, last year, and that's 17 more than we had last year, so it's already starting off great. Um, at the quarry, uh, that's in full swing. We did have, out of the 24 days that we could be open, fortunately with the weather, we were closed for those days. 
Um, we've already sold about 1,300 season passes. Last year we had 1,500, so we're definitely on our way to meeting that same same amount. But we have exceeded revenues from last year. Yes. Yep. And then due to the price increase, we exceeded the revenues. And then um, also we did have the uh, Star Guard audits, and that's the auditing agency that comes down with our guards. And we received four star rating, which is really good. I mean, the best you can get is five, which you almost never get. However, with um, some of them, well, with the scanning and rescues, we were uh, rated five stars. And they actually said that we were one of the best pools this season they have come audited. So really safe down there, which is great. And then finally, the NAIS tournament, which um, definitely want to thank Commissioner Tillman on helping with that one. Not running it almost the whole thing. Um, yeah, it went really smooth. We had 22 teams, which was a bit bit less, mainly probably Father's Day was our guest on that one. Um, but yeah, ran really smoothly and people were very happy, lots of compliments, so. Great. Um, as for work plan goals, uh, the three that I'm most excited to be working on is developing a list of grant opportunities um, just so we can enhance the programs that we already have and look at possibly new programs and uh, still keeping the fees low for our participants. So, um, did really well with my previous job in finding those, so hopefully you can find a bunch out here also. Great. Um, uh, develop a formal program evaluation standard by July. Uh, we do have an evaluation format right now, and I was hoping to improve, improve upon that, plus also start using technology a bit more, especially with our tablets now, being able to use those to be able to go out and just do evals right on the spot. So we'll be working with staff to make sure that we have all of our uh, programs evaluated. In a year from now, I'd like 100% of our programs to be evaluated and be able to use that to see what, how we can improve upon it. Um, and then finally, develop a cost allocation model to account for district services for external hybrid programs. What that means is with the programs that we partner with, um, we can show them what they are getting uh, for, their, for their dollars. So, you know, where we take, where we, um, split some of the funds, we show them exactly what they're getting for those uh, funds being uh, staff time for registration, for advertising, and actually be able to put like a dollar amount to that. Great. Thanks. All right. Good evening. Uh, human resources is also going to have a busy year once we get done with hiring and training all these new summer folks. I thought you already had a busy year. <coughs> <laughs> We like to keep it fresh. <laughs> uh, three big projects this year will be creating new performance evaluation tools, hoping to have each area have a little different looking tool. Currently we have the same evaluation performed for parks maintenance staff, performed for a yoga teacher, performed for the front desk ladies, and clearly we can understand why that might not be the best. They're all doing very different things. I'm also going to be helping with our volunteer program. Staff are very excited to offer more opportunities than ever and ways to invite the community to come participate in different ways with our programs and services. So we're hoping to get an application online, um, ways to track hours, and then finally doing a lot more staff training based on the values we've identified that we want to be known for and what our employee engagement survey told us we should try to improve upon, and then some leadership development, which will help us with succession planning. Great. A uh, quick update from my, um, my marketing report. Um, soon you will see a TV over at the Eastside Community Center. Um, we're partnering with, with a company called Reach Marketing to um, basically have a software program where it will be, it's a web-based program, which is nice so that we can uh, upload it, change it um, as frequently and from wherever we need to. Um, but basically it'll have scrolling ads that we create for our own programs. And then uh, what's nice is they integrate with RecTrack. They work with a lot of park districts. So it can have a, a scrolling facility schedule and then it'll have a weather bar at the top. So all the New Horizons preschool parents, all the parents that are over there waiting for their kids in classes, the seniors that we have over there at the east side, um, basically, all the patrons will be able to then see that TV and see our own in-house advertising, essentially. So, I'm excited to get that up. It should be up in the next couple weeks. So, Great. Um, And then for my uh, work plans, 
Um, I'm going to be working with Lori McDonald and Alex uh, to develop a marketing action plan for New Horizons Preschool. Um, it was talked uh, a couple months ago at a board meeting about how across the board preschool registrations are just down. So um, kind of looking at trends and looking at the history of the actual New Horizons Preschool program um, and then develop an, an action plan moving forward for things that we can try. We are going to be doing an open house um, sometime this summer to allow uh, prospective parents to come through and actually see what the preschool looks like, talk to the teachers, that kind of thing. So hopefully that will kind of spark some interest as well. Um, and then the, the big thing is to announce and roll out the new logo. So um, that'll be a big project and we're very excited. We're super close to rolling that out. So I'm excited to do next that. Next month? And then, yeah, yep, next month. And then um, my last report is to introduce <laughs> Angie Senkfell. She is our summer marketing intern. Hi, so um, I just finished up my junior year at the University of Illinois, and I'm studying advertising. So through my um, application process and everything, I saw the Batavia Park District, and I was very involved in Park District growing up and participating, and so I felt like this was a good opportunity to not only receive hands-on experience, but to also give back to the community as well. Um, and it's very applicable to what I want to be doing because I want to end up in PR and marketing. So um, I'm very excited to be here, very excited to meet and work with you all. Thank you. Oh, welcome. Welcome. Oh, thank you. you can come up here and we can do the handshake. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Tara. Hi. Go Illini. Hi. <laughs> and Angie was one of about 30 applicants, so we did have a lot of interest this year. Um, a lot of very high, highly qualified candidates. So she's proven to be a very quick learner and is catching on and fitting right in with staff. So we're happy to have her. Did you have any questions for Angie? No, that's not surprising by her choice of schools. I know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what can I say? Thank you. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do the next on the agenda, but in an effort to try to make sure that these ladies have an opportunity to go home, that's we really want to see chair yoga. Mm -hmm. oh. Kathy, please. Okay. Well, first of all, I'd like to thank the board for giving us the opportunity tonight to come and demonstrate chair yoga. But even more than that, I really want to thank our patrons because I really believe that we have the best patrons in all of the Fox Valley. You guys are dedicated and wonderful and beautiful, and thank you for giving up your evening tonight. However, I did promise them all a dub dark chocolate when we're done. So I'm not sure if it was the chocolate or the, just the desire to come to do yoga. So if you'll just bear with us for a couple of seconds, we're going to make our chairs in a little horseshoe here and bring in a few more people from the hallway that have come Great. to join okay. us. Okay. Volunteer to join in with us. So to scoot your chairs back a bit. So normally, in the lights and we have some beautiful music in the background. Uh, this class is relatively new. It was designed to just bring yoga to everyone. So whether you're flexible or whether you rarely get out to move around, whatever the case may be, this is the place for a whole lot of people. And I think everybody here that takes class can agree with me that once you start doing it, you kind of get hooked and you feel so much better. So we've warmed up a little bit outside, so we're just going to start out and we're just going to do some, some warm-ups. So these are called sunrises, and we want to sit up nice and tall with a straight back. There really isn't any reason that anyone, whether you have a desk job or a standing job, should be hunching over. And when we hunch over, it sets up very bad habits. So we want nice tall posture so that we're free to breathe freely and fully. So sitting nice and tall, let's just first breathe in the nose and then breathe out the nose. And do that about three or more, four times on your own. I did ask Eric to sing, but he wouldn't, so. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I feel much more relaxed now. <laughs> yeah. All right. And this is an abbreviated version of class tonight. So sitting nice and tall, we're going to start with what is called sunrises. So keeping your spine nice and long, let's inhale our arms up. Exhale down. Inhale, arms up. Exhale down. Inhaling, arms up. Exhaling down. 
two more times, inhaling, lengthening on the inhalation, exhaling, relaxing, and one more. And exhale, very good. This next pose is called seated samastiti, and this helps to with postural alignment. So we're gonna still inhale our arms up, but once our arms are up, we're just gonna lift our heels up off the floor a little bit. So we'll get those calves going too. So let's inhale, arms up, lift your heels. Exhale, arms down, heels down. Inhale, arms up, lift the heels. Exhale, arms down, heels. Inhaling, arms up, lift the heels. Exhale, arms and heels. Once more, inhaling, lift the heels. And then exhale, arms down and heels. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and do our arm reaches. So many of the poses that we do in chair yoga class help us perform various functions during the day. And one of the important things is to be able to reach without pulling a muscle. So we're gonna do some arm reaches. We're gonna pretend that we have something in a tall cabinet. So everybody will just reach up one arm at a time, nice and tall. Keep that spine long. Keep the breathing going in and out. Of those nostrils reaching. Very good. A couple more. All right. And then not only do we want to work our, our bodies, but we want to work our brain as well. So we do a lot of that. So we are going to, when we inhale, we're going to lift, lift an arm, and then we're going to bring the opposite leg out. And then we're going to alternate with that. So it's the opposite arm is leg lift. So I'm not going to say right or left. You can choose yourself. And the, the board is lucky because we can't see their legs. <laughs> anyway, let's inhale. Exhale it down. Inhaling switch. Exhale it down. Inhaling switch. Exhaling it down. Hold it here. Inhaling. Who's having a real good time? Very good. <laughs> inhale. Exhale down. And one more. And exhale, very good. And then we do something called finger articulation. Often uh, arthritis really doesn't know any age barriers. It can be of any age and have arthritis. And our fingers, it's important to keep our fingers moving. So this is called finger articulation. We're just gonna start and tap each finger to the thumb, just on your own. A lot of people work with their hands, knitting, crocheting, or whatever, but then a lot of people don't. So we wanna keep those Hands in good shape. And then we'll bring that down. Very good. Let's just bring our shoulders up and back and around. And then we're going to do something called sitting in stillness. It's a little exercise. We'll put our hands together. We're going to interlace our fingers. And then inhale deeply. Exhale, bring your arms down long, tighten the muscles to the bone. Inhale the arms up. Exhale the hands behind the head, undo your fingers if you need to. Inhale straight up again. Exhale to the front. Inhale, hands back to the heart. Interlace those fingers, inhale. Exhale down. Inhale up. Exhale, hands behind the head. Inhaling up, exhaling to the front, and inhaling to the heart. We'll do it one more time. Inhale here, exhale, arms down, inhale up, exhale behind, inhale up, exhale forward, and inhale in. And so then we'll put our hands on our laps and sit tall. We're just going to take a couple more breaths before we finish up just to help alleviate any tension, anxiety that you might have. And one thing that we talk about a lot in yoga is taking time to breathe. It's called mindfulness meditation. So if everybody would just take a minute or two out of every day just to breathe in the nose, breathe out the nose, breathe in positive energy. And then as we're breathing out, we're getting rid of stress, anxiety, anger, judgment, all that negative stuff that we do not want to have to be a part of ourselves. So let's take a few seconds here to inhale and exhale. Inhaling the positive, exhaling the negative. This actually can lower blood pressure, boost our immune system. Everyone should be doing that every single day. 
And we're just going to inhale our arms up and place our hands together. And exhale the hands to our heart. And in yoga, we say namaste. namaste. And we also have an instant karma message every week that we have in all of our yoga classes. So I've chosen our message for this week to do whatever you can to enjoy your community. So get out this summer and take advantage of all the great things we have going for us. So again, let's thank everybody for being here. First you get hooked on Teacher Kathy, and then you get hooked on the yoga, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, so um, before we move on to executive director's report, sure. are there any board comments on any of the staff reports? I just have two questions that I wrote down. I just, I just need to acknowledge uh, Ryan McCauley all weekend, um, worked tirelessly uh, eight, nine hour days in the gym, which is a lot harder than it actually sounds, but, and was, you know, build up to the tournament. Just, I need to acknowledge him publicly and everybody. Fantastic job. Great. Hey, Ryan. Anyone else? Um, so, uh, first, um, the bids for the poured in place playground surface. Mm -hmm. You're receiving them on July 1st? We're opening them on July 1st, correct. Okay. Yep. Is there any timing related issues that you would need the board to come together prior to that in order to approve those bids? I mean, I just know how precious days in the summer are to get stuff done, and I and three weeks to wait for an approval. I mean, I guess I just want to make sure that. No, I we've got this timed out so that the okay. the completion date is end of August, first part of September. So it, it is plenty of time for that uh, product. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. We're Thank comfortable you for with that. that. My pleasure. Thank you for the, thinking about that. Yes. My pleasure. Uh, and then, um, Rita, is there, what is, you know, we, we talked uh, obviously at length about the budget for this year. Mm -hmm. And you talked about starting the budget cycle yeah. basically next month. So I just want to understand what, your, what the expectation of the board is going to be in the next four months or so. Because we're off cycle, it's a mm -hmm. different, and I just want to make sure we have a little dialogue here on what, what the staff's expectation is in terms of timing, et cetera. Any feedback on that? Well, we're looking to start end of July, pretty much August, because July we want to have three months in in financial statements. So we sure. can have something to start looking at. Sure. Um, the goal would be to go to talk about um, capital and, oh my gosh, I don't have, a, I don't have a, a calendar in front of me anymore. Um, in the tax levy? Yeah, calendar tax, uh, calendar capital and tax levy in October and possibly at that same time also in a separate meeting do the special, you know, the special meeting as well to cover really possibly doing it separate depends. We still need to kind of get all that through. Um, and then in November, we would give you a budget to review a final budget then approve it in December. So for January 1st, we're ready to go. Okay. Same like thing to, with the levy. And I'd like to have a board staff retreat. And so that way That's we, can, I'm going. we can have that yeah. first and then we can have the more formal discussions. So what kind of timing are we looking at to hopefully try to target for that? It'd be October. October, mm -hmm. okay. You, mm -hmm. uh, Halloween costumes or no? <laughs> no. <laughs> Only here. <Yeah>. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe here. Bring it on. All right. And then uh, lastly, and I just want to uh, make a comment, Alex, and that is, you know, I want to reassure our community that you know, we take great pride in the quarry. We know it's not a pool. It doesn't have a clear bottom, and you can see to the bottom. But we take great pride and have done so for many, many years on establishing a very high level of safety with our guards and training, uh, regular training. And I want to assure everyone there that, uh, that we have some of the best pool guards, you know, in the area for sure, if not in the state, and that the quarry is a great place to go to bring your family uh, to be safe. So just want to reassure everybody of that. So thanks for bringing that up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, that was all of my comments. Anybody mm -hmm. else for staff? Okay. Executive Director's Report. Yes, um, I would like to make mention that I have been working very closely with all the members of the, lead of the leadership team on their work plan goals and scorecards. And they are very ambitious goals um, and really only in an eight month time frame since we are looking at a stub year this year. So um, I just wanted to commend staff for taking on the challenges because you know, I, I know it is a steep hill, but they've got the right shoes on to run it. Great. 
Yeah, I was, uh, in general, I was impressed with the goals. Um, I, I think they're you know, much more specific and measurable than they have been in the past. Mm -hmm. we, we used a different tool, too. We used a RASIC uh, instrument uh, for the work plan goals. We also did spend a lot of time um, discussing them individually and then collectively as a group. But, um, but you know, staff is ready. We're, we're fired up and ready to go, and we appreciate the support that you've given us in the budget to be able to follow through on those goals. Who well, needs 12 months to get it done? Did you see the stink eye? You do eight months every year. <laughs> I'm say what she's not telling her that you have eight months from this point forward. <laughs> but I'd, I'd be remiss to say that um, the work plan goals and the scorecards are in alignment with the strategic master plan. Sure. So that's really our guiding light. Well, I, I, mean, I know how difficult it is, first of all, to establish them. But the way I have always viewed the work plan goals for this district is, in reality, you're improving, upper, you're, you're improving the district for the community. So by having lofty, more realistic goals, you're raising the bar. And it's always been, you know, from this chair, as I see, uh, people who really want to do a great job for this district and this community. And so I kudos to all of you for establishing them and, and actually doing a good job at this point in, in achieving some. So, um, and technically, we have seven months now. But I did also want to mention for the viewing audience at home, and, and I did send a, a board alert that um, the Batavia Park District is a recipient of an Illinois Department of Natural Resources grant in the amount of $41,700. Um, it's the Illinois Youth Recreation Corps program and we are able to hire 10 seasonal staff, so the, the Parks Department and the Recreation Department will uh, benefit greatly as a result. And kudos to Jennifer for pulling the application together, Eric and Alex's staff, uh, Ryan actually, for, for working so hard and, and working as a team to, to pull it together under a tight time frame. So it's a nice saving. Great, anything else? All right, next time on the agenda is uh, number 13, Old Business. The, uh, so we have before us a second reading for the administrative and governance policy discussion. And we have a few sections of our governance manual to approve. And Allison, I, I, I just want to make sure I, when I take the motion that I catch all of this. Sure. Um. And there, there was one uh, addition. It's under 1.06.7. And Commissioner Riley and Commissioner Gray had mentioned that for vacancies, and I highlighted it, um, that uh, that we add um, three consecutive months or six months in a 12-month period for how to determine whether or not a vacancy is, is established, okay. right? Is that consistent with the statute and requirement? Or the statute actually doesn't have any specific time uh, period. It's by ordinance of the district. Um, you just need to make sure you apply it consistently. And there is a there's not a requirement in the statute, but there is a case decision um, that requires uh, a, a public body before actually um, enforcing that ordinance to hold a, to offer the um, commissioner an opportunity for a hearing. That, we're talking about absences from, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, Adam Simon reviewed this right. and made the changes. Right, Did he, is there anything in there about the hearings? I, I haven't seen it, so I just wanted to check. Mm -hmm. it, it may not be there, it's fine, but no, just, no. To, just to give you that information is that if you were to, um, if you were going to enforce that ordinance, then you would want to give the person an opportunity for a hearing and, and a, a closed meeting hearing to explain the reasons. And, and that's more procedural, correct? Is that why procedural. maybe it's not part of the policy? That's correct. Okay. So we are then uh, before us is the governance policy section 1.05 through 1.12. Uh, 1.09.4 of governance. Yeah, governance, yeah, mm -hmm. I was, I was, I'll start it with governance. Okay, so governance is 
Administrative? Any updates on the administrative side? Uh, not with these policies, no. And the administrative policies are not numbered, so we'll tag them as administrative policy. Okay. So I would entertain a motion to approve the governance uh, policies 1.05 and 1.2 through 1.094 as presented, as well as the um, policies for the administrative manual as presented. So moved. Second. second. Okay. Motion by Tim and second by Gray. Okay, any further discussion? I think we had a couple of items here. For mm -hmm. Which the governance or policy or uh, administrative? Uh, 1.1, I guess administrative, 1.12.1. Um, oh, that's under. Yeah, oh, that's, 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 that's the next one. That's, yeah, that's the next one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Any, anyone on, on 105 no. through 09? No. no. Okay, Shelly, please call the roll. Tillman. Aye. Gray. Aye. Riley. Aye. Boyd. Aye. Kelly. Aye. Motion carries. Okay, so next item is item new business, and we're uh, discussing. One second here. Extension of the same policy. Yeah. Next. Next. So, um, and this is the first reading only, so I'll yield the floor to Commissioner Boyles. Yeah, I just had a, a couple of issues, and a, a couple of just corrections um, on 112.3, um, just finding the uh, new fiscal year in there. Mm -hmm. and I did put, I did so put Gary's corrections this. in front so of you. That's here. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. yeah, Gary's oh. corrections are at, at your you. place. Um, the second one. The second one was just a typo on the, the Weapons Act. We had unleaded instead of unloaded. <laughs> which I thought it was kind of the same. You could also have an unleaded weapon. Yeah, hey. I guess that is unloaded. <laughs> um, so making that correction. And then the, 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 third, didn't catch that. the third comment I had um, had to do with the section on uh, missiles. <laughs> um, one, of the, one of the items in there was a prohibition of model rockets. And my suggestion was to remove that from that section, which was more about throwing things, and move it over into the later section. And I don't see that. Oh, actually, you know what? That's under the, that's the ordinance manual. That's in the that's, ordinance. Or the oh, ordinance. Yeah, that's a separate. That's under. Uh, is that a next? Is that that's late? 14C. I got ahead of myself. That's okay. okay. It's 14C. Okay. All right. Because I saw everybody looking for it, so. Okay. And those were the two. Okay. Just Any further comments? clarification? So, where, so if someone is a, 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 a model rocket aficionado, where would they go? To they have to obtain that. You want to answer? Um, actually, right now, as our policy states, we don't allow it. Period. So we okay. we refer them to other park districts in the area. You know, what my recommendation was going to be to pull it out of that section of the ordinance, put it in the section that also mentioned model airplanes where it's prohibited unless there's a permit issued by the executive director, which would allow if there was an event or an activity where it was appropriate, where Allison would have discretion mm -hmm. to issue that, but on the normal course of events, it would, it would be something you can't do. I think it's wise to have some flexibility in case you, you create a program or have some type of mm -hmm. contest or event that you know people might want to do that. I mean, I know there's forest preserve districts, many of them have dedicated areas and mm -hmm. All kinds of different things for that, but you know there are folks that you know get something for a child's birthday and probably have no clue that you know, and the only big open space is a park. Right? <laughs> so right. that's where they go. And another correction that Gary had is um, under 1.12.1 Open Meetings Act um, to mention that it's a requirement for board members for new board members to take the Open Meetings Act training. So we'll put this on, uh, so if anybody has any additional comments, you have to get a chance to review them even further. These uh, updates will be sent to us electronically, yes? Yes. Thank you. Um, we will uh, take this under consideration for approval for uh, our July date. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. So next item on the agenda is uh, Capital Development Project Update, Renovation at Ingstrom Park, and there is a lot of dirt moving. Mm -hmm. 
Are you able to? A lot of mounds of dirt. Are you standing on your soapbox? Standing on my soapbox. Just <laughs> to you. Um, Yes, it's been about a month. They started uh, our renovation project at Engstrom Park. Um, before you can renovate, you have to deconstruct. So there was a lot of removals to have to do. Um, they started right in on the parking lots and removing all of the existing trail. This is the new plan, so this does not show all of the old trail that's come out. Uh, what they've done is that they've cored in. It was amazing, I do have a picture of our old path, and they had stopped with the tractor carving it. It's literally, we're about double wide of what we had out there. It's, it's amazing. Um, so this, is, this shows the new configuration of the path. It will be a mile in length if you do the entire thing, uh, and you can cross through the parking lot here. Um, I darkened in the pathway so that we kind of can see it a little better here. So that's all gone. They are with no rain tonight, they should start bringing in stone for this north loop uh, to start the paving process. They're going to build the new base. Uh, we're down at what's going to be about a nine inch profile um, across that section. So that's that just a two inch surface, surface course? So six inch plus three or six inch plus? Six plus two. Six plus two. Or, yeah. Yeah. Uh, two on the, uh, on the pathways, three on the parking lot. Three total on the parking lot, not two total? Um, two inch by two, or inch and a half, inch and a half? Inch and a half, inch and a half, yes. We're only going three. Okay. Um, the orange indicates uh, that we now have curb and gutter on the parking lot. That yay. Yay, yeah. <laughs> Historically, we've had the wood timbers with the mm. metal spikes that mm. continually come out of the ground, uh, and Eric's guys pound and pound and pound and pound. We've actually saved some. They're going to use them now for soccer goal stakes because <laughs> they're three feet tall and they're a wonderful stake. Um, so they've got the north lot done. They've got the south lot done, or they are getting the south lot done. Uh, they are beginning to put in the uh, two areas of concrete for the walks. Um, much of what's being done is uh, is all in the uh, to become compliant with ADA. Uh, we've got all the detectable warning strips in where they're supposed to be. Um, our new area for our uh, porta potty uh, corral and venting area here. Uh, they will begin working. They began tearing the roof off the uh, shelter on the one rain day we've had, and they had to shut down because it really got terribly slick and it wasn't very safe to do. Um, so we are, uh, they've begun to excavate for our southern rain garden. They will begin next week, I'm told, to start on this one. The red lines indicate the pipes. Oh, we've not got underground piping where we've never had piping before. Everything is always just sheet drained across the whole park down to the south here. So now it's going to be caught here. Some of it would be caught here. And it will go underground through and then down and around and into this one. And eventually we'll get out to the street, down the parkway, and out into the uh, street to the sewer system, to the storm sewer system. Um, so we are going to be dramatically changing the hydrology of this uh, area, which will be very nice. Um, we are, if this week holds weather-wise, as I say, we're going to be able to start doing the pathway work. Um, they're going to go begin, really, the deconstruction of the shelter. Uh, that will be getting its new roof, its new uh, knee braces, uh, and new uh, column feet. It's just, it's gonna change the look of the entire place and we're really, really excited. The contractor's been extremely good to work with. Our consultants uh, are very pleased, as am I. Um, and of course, Mother Nature has a big part to do with that. There's no stress when you, when you don't have bad weather. Any questions that you folks have had? We, we sent a letter out to everybody. Um, it was Over 500 right, people. Yeah, right at 500 letters that went out to this whole section of town so that they knew what was going on. Uh, I've gotten a couple of emails back with questions. Um, nobody has had, a, you know, really any problems. The several that have mainly mentioned how much they miss the path. And, you know, it's like, please just wait. Uh, we will be, uh, we'll be, it'll be coming back yet this summer. Uh, and just so uh, the folks at home know, we are targeted to be done by the end of October. If we maintain this pace, I think we'll be ahead of that. So we'll be, uh, we'll be using the park and it's, 
closed. Next summer, the plan is next summer to do a second phase, uh, which will include a baseball renovation and some cleanup and more tree planting. We are going to be planting another 35 trees this year into the park. Um, some did come out, um, mostly in uh, reaction to the ADA necessities, unfortunately, uh, and to the drainage uh, changes, the swaling that had to be done. So those trees will be replaced uh, and more will come back in next year. So we're really excited because this park lost a good number of ash trees um, in the last couple of years. Uh, Eric's guys have done a great job and we, we stumped out a bunch of them this, in this project. Um, so if you ever have any questions or if anybody asks and if your constituents, any of our residents, please let me know and we'll certainly get them whatever information they're looking for. We've been working with BYB pretty closely. Um, they've begun playing out here now. Uh, they'll be done, I think, through the end of, the ball, of July. It's uh, the six, seven, and eights, I think, play out here. So um, we've made it as safe as possible. So Our new coin phrase has been, pardon our progress. Pardon our progress, that's right. Away we go on a much anticipated <laughs> renovation project. Is the basketball court still there or is that anything else? This basketball court is still here and it's going to get resurfaced. Okay. The, the one that was adjacent to it sat here and it is gone in order to facilitate this uh, piece of the pathway. So, yes, yeah, it's going to be, um, they were waiting to get all the drainage work done before they started the service. Great. So, good. Thank Jim, you. Could you mention that the property will be available for 4th of July and fireworks. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, we have um, at staff level, um, we are going to have this upper, obviously, area, the open area is still uh, being maintained at its normal uh, method um, for the summer. Um, it will be available, um, if, correct me, as far as I understand, they are closing Mill Millview Drive, is that correct? That's correct. Mm -hmm. For the event. So there won't be parking on Millview. There obviously is no parking here in the park, uh, but it still will be open for seating. Mm -hmm. And it will have, uh, we're gonna treat it just like every other year. More yes. garbage cans and all that stuff. So. Great. Yeah. Thank but you. I also think there is more space being available at the high school. Correct. So uh, they've opened up some areas there. Mm -hmm. Thank so. you. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Thanks Jim. I, yeah. Thank you. So next item on the agenda is uh, approval of ordinance number 338 related to the control of conduct of all persons and patrons under the jurisdiction of the park district. So I've been working very closely with uh, Police Chief Shira and actually Jim Rock over there um, on this particular ordinance. So um, the police chief and I have met and pulled out uh, some of the offenses that are, offensive. I'm sorry? Offensive. Oh, yes, offensive. <laughs> um, but that happen more often than not, such as trespassing and vandalism. And um, we have increased the fine for those particular items. Um, and uh, we actually, as a result, because we found that our most current IGA for, with the police department is from 1977. So we're dusting that off and <laughs> um, we're looking at that again. <laughs> so. you have an IGA with the police department? I didn't know we had one. Yeah. I, mean, I knew we had an ordinance. It's, it's, it's not typewritten. Un, it's not unusual that when something gets done, you know, 35 years ago that nobody even knows it exists. Yeah, right. so, mm -hmm. and, it, and I think one of the things that we might want, it, 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 interestingly enough, the ordinance has language in it that says it will renew every year as long as both boards take action to renew it and no. by virtue of what you've suggested no nobody's been doing <laughs> don't it. remember that yeah. you've been here right. for a few years right so it, it's time to take a look and my understanding is that kevin drendel uh is working on a draft to update it and that that will be coming sometime in the next few months but we 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 have looked at this in the past and yes. i know i know when, when chief shira first took the job we we kind of went through this mm -hmm. one the last time this was passed was 2005. And so um, uh, when this does get passed again, if it's passed tonight or next month, um, I'll be working with uh, Chief Shira and actually our marketing department and finding a way that we can uh, 
have them uh, have the police officers use it in their squad cars more effectively electronically. Enforceability has always been an issue, and you know, for our purposes and our viewing audience. We have ordinances set forth on the conduct and activities that can occur in the parks for everyone's protection. Mm -hmm. And by, by establishing this ordinance, we allow the police department to help us administer it when necessary to, you know, for those people who violate it. Um, and we'll continue to do so. It's been in place for some time. We've made some adjustments to it. So um, for those of you who see things happening in our parks that shouldn't be happening in our parks, please don't hel hesitate to call the police department. Um, and by our action tonight, we'll be basically enhancing and improving what I believe to be a more enforceable document, so. Mm -hmm. And with that being said, that it, this is where Commissioner Boyle's not gonna wait for discussion, but you did have a comment about the missiles uh, for this. I talk about missiles? Yeah, well, that was the one with the model rockets. I had just suggested be moved, removed the model rockets be removed from that section and moved over to the section that also has model airplanes and, and treating them both the same. Is that in this document? Um, or was that in the It was in an email that he sent yesterday. It's the 17.1, where it talks about hit golf balls, launch model rockets, or remote airplanes. Projectiles. Missiles. So, Gary, you're suggesting 17.1, we can move where it says launch model rockets or remote airplanes. Uh, move that to section. So 21 or 26.1. Actually, there's two. No, 17.1 and 17.2 both hold the same type of language as okay. far as. And you want to move to 26? 26 26.1. 26 26.1, um, it's, it's under section 26. It says, it's about vehicles, boats, and aircraft. Yeah. Because of the verbiage at the end, it says, that the executive director of board can um, make, make, make it possible. Okay. I, I just thought it made more sense there. Yeah, no, as long as it's all in, you right. know, because again, this is about enforceability, and so as long as it's, you know, the, the officers don't have to look in two spots to see if, mm -hmm. you know, what's happening out there, as long as it kind of comes in as one, I have no issue with that. I think that's a good idea. Okay. So per Gary's changes? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any board objection to that? Okay. Any further comments or discussion on this? Um, I'm wondering, uh, do we, do people pay fines? When do they receive fines and do they actually pay them? So the police issue uh, tickets, sometimes they, they call them O tickets for ordinance. Um, they issue the, the O tickets, sometimes they'll issue warnings. Um, it's the same actual document as if you had a speeding ticket, so they use the same type of receipt. Um, and then they issue the actual ticket, and then people have to mail them in, and they have X amount of days to mail them in, and if the tickets are late, then the price goes up. And so the city of Batavia receives the... They deal with that part. The, the revenue. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Kids in this town are very busy. <laughs> That's right. Good question. Anyone else? So, I would entertain a motion to <coughs> approve ordinance number 338 related to the control and conduct of all persons and patrons under the jurisdiction of the Bethavia Park District as modified. So moved. Second. Motion by uh, Tillman, second by Foyles. Any further discussion? Shall I please call the roll? Tillman. Aye. Boyles. Aye. <coughs> Riley. Aye. Gray. Aye. Callahan. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, item number 15, Fox Valley Special Rec Association. Uh, there's nothing to report right now. We're reviewing policies uh, as they're preparing for the distinguished accreditation, just like we are. Okay, so we have two items remaining, um, 
and that is an executive session where we had personnel and our annual review of our meeting minutes. And then when we come out of executive session, we have to take action on which meeting minutes we will release or retain, um, which is a resolution. So that will be the only piece of business that will occur afterwards. So um, I, had, I had asked Allison to put personnel on executive session in anticipation that Dirk would be here because we were finalizing the contract, mm -hmm. but in light of the fact that Dirk had a family emergency tonight, I'd like to uh, postpone that till next month, and I've had a, I've talked to Allison about that, and she's in agreement that that's something. So if you're all in agreement, we can just do that next month. Is that all right? Mm -hmm. So no executive session, or just, well, just for the other just for, yeah, just, just for the, so we will, we'll not, we will not do personnel, uh, and we will do this. So I would entertain a motion to enter into executive session uh, for the annual semi-annual review of the executive session meeting minutes 2C1, 2C21 of the Illinois Open Meetings Act. So moved. Second. Motion by Tillman, second by Gray. So I please call the roll. Tillman. Aye. Gray. Aye. Riley. Aye. Boyle. Aye. Aye, motion carries. So we are going to go in executive session for probably not very long, five, ten minutes, and then we'll be back. So I'll ask everybody to go and come back. Thank you. So uh, we're back in open session. We have completed our review of our closed session meeting minutes. Uh, it is a semi-annual activity that the Park Board takes on for items and matters that come to us that we're allowed to speak in executive session about. And uh, I would entertain a motion at this time to approve resolution number 226, a resolution regarding the release of closed session meeting minutes as presented. So moved. Second. Motion by Foro, second by Tillman. Okay. Shelley, please call the roll. Boyles. Aye. Tillman. Aye. Riley. Aye. Gray. Aye. Kelly. Aye. Motion carries. So, coming to the final item on the agenda, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Moved by Tillman, second by Gray. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. We are adjourned. So we will see you next month. Thank you very much for joining us.